Hey guys, Jarek here. Welcome to my tutorial on how to record PC gameplay. I get a ton of questions involving this in my YouTube comments, on Steam, on Skype, and instead of repeating myself over and over again, I figured I'd make a tutorial video. I made one of these a few years ago, but I think it's outdated at this point and should be redone. Throughout this video, you may be thinking to yourself, this is too complicated, I can't understand this, I give up. Please don't go into that mindset, it's actually very, very simple, and after a very short period of time, you'll have all of this stuff memorized, and you'll realize how easy it actually is. So just get into the mindset of, just do it, just learn it. When recording PC gameplay, you need two different types of software. Video recording software, and video editing software. I'll go over the video recording software first, and give you three different choices. The first one is the most well-known choice, and that is Fraps. This is the simplest and the hardest to mess up, but unfortunately it has the least amount of features and does make your computer lag pretty significantly with a lot of games. Pretty simple stuff here. What corner overlay you want your FPS counter to be, where you want to record, the hotkey to start recording, recording your microphone if you really want, and how many FPS, how many frames per second you want to record at. And that's pretty much all you got. The thing with Fraps is basically what you are seeing when you're playing is what you're recording. Whatever frame rate you're playing at, whatever resolution you're playing at, that's what you're going to get. So you don't have a lot of features and really I don't recommend it. The second choice is the one that I prefer myself, and that is DX Story. This is a fantastic piece of software. It has a lot more features than Fraps, so I'm going to really delve into it and tell you how to use it. So this first little tab here, the second tab I should say, this is just where you want your frame rate overlay to be, and what color you want it to be. DX Story works a little bit differently than Fraps though, and it's really cool in the way that it does. You can be playing at a different frame rate than when you're recording at. So it will give you two different numbers. The number on the left will be the frame rate you were playing at. So if you're playing at 60 FPS, it'll tell you 60 frames per second. But then it will have a second number next to that. This second number is the frame rate you are recording at. So you could be playing at 60 frames and recording at 30 frames. Or you could be playing at 144 frames but recording at 60 frames. It's a really cool feature. So you will have two numbers and that's what they mean. This tab is just where you want to record to, what hard drive you want to record to. It does come with a really cool benchmark, benchmark feature. Now, when you buy a hard drive, it will usually tell you, say, I have a Velociraptor, and when I bought it, it tells you 10,000 RPM. That's the read speed. What you want to know is the write speed. So, here's the benchmark feature. You just open this, click Run. I'm getting about 115 to 120 megabytes a second. That's very, very good. This is important because you do record very large files when you're recording PC gameplay, and you need to have a good hard drive. In my experience, the speed you need for hard drives, about 50 to 55 megabytes a second is good for recording in 720. 70 to 75 and above is good for recording in 1080. But again, this is just what hard drive you want to record to. So, very, very simple stuff. You just click add and choose wherever you want to record. Here is just what hotkey you want to use. Press F8 to start and stop recording. That's my personal choice. Here has a lot of really, really cool stuff. If you were going to be using DX Story, this is really important that you do this. Download this codec, the Legorith Lossless Codec. Very simple, I will link it down below to this website where you can download it. It is legit, although it looks like it came out of the 90s. You just click this first link, open it, click run, and it'll install the codec. That's it. I already have it installed, so I won't go through with that. And then in DX Story, you will select Legorith Lossless Codec. Click on this little pen thing right to the right of this. For mode, sele select YV12, and then click Use Multi-Threading. Just copy the same settings I have, this is what works the best. Over here you can choose what frame rate you want to record at. Again, the recording frame rate is completely different than the frame rate you were playing at, which is awesome. So. I recommend 60, YouTube can handle up to 60 now, 
And despite what anyone tells you, you definitely can tell the difference between 60 and 30 FPS, so please record at 60 frames per second. The only reason you wouldn't is if your hard drive isn't good enough. For output, make sure you have file output selected. If you only have direct show output, this is for streaming, so you will not start recording even if you hit the hotkey to start recording. Make sure you have file output selected. For file format, select AVI. RockApp is an interesting feature. Uh, if you have very slow hard drives, you can select use RockApp for the file format. And that will split the recording between your top two hard drives. And then after you're done recording, you open this and it will make those two files into one. It requires more hard drive space, but again, if you have slow hard drives, you can use that. But I really just recommend recording in AVI. And then scaling. I keep this at 100%, but what's another really, really awesome feature with DX Story, you don't have to record at the same frame rate that you're playing at. So I usually play at 1920 by 1080, but if I wanted to, I could click size here, type in 1280 by 720, and I will record in 720p, even though I'm playing at 1080. So if you have a slow hard drive, this works awesome, or if your computer isn't very good and you don't want to wait years to render, you know, it's, it's another option for that. So it's pretty cool that they allow you to do this. I will keep it at percent and record a 1080 if you can. For here, this is uh, just selecting what audio things to record from. So I have my speakers and my microphone selected. A really cool thing about this, you can select up to eight of these and each one you select will make a different audio timeline in Sony Vegas, which is really awesome and I'll explain more on that later. No other video editing or video recording software does this. This is just for screenshots. I don't really take screenshots of this, so I'm going to ignore that. And then for this, click Force CPU Processing. The rest of that you don't really need to know about. Um, you can use the limit video FPS if you're playing an older game that can't handle above 60 frames. Uh, but typically, I never really use this. And really, that's it. That's all you need to know about DX Story. Now let's move on to the most recent one. I honestly do not recommend this. I know a lot of people swear by it, but I've had really nothing but issues involving Shadowplay. Uh, this is if you have an NVIDIA video card. You can record using the Shadowplay function. And it's cool in theory, but it's still in beta, so it's not really complete. I've had a lot of issues with it. I've had frame rate issues involving this, this program. Um, I've had issues, it really doesn't like to play nice with Sony Vegas, so that's a big reason I don't re I don't recommend it. A big problem I have with this is say, uh, say I record an eight minute video. I put that eight minute video into Sony Vegas and Sony Vegas for whatever reason says that video was only a minute and 30 minutes long. I don't know why, but I can't find a solution, even though I have definitely confirmed that other people have the same problem. So again, I don't recommend this, but I know some people swear by it, so I will talk about it. It's overall very simple. It has more features than Fraps does, but still much less features than DX Story does. And not being able to put the audio into different audio timelines is a big killer for it. So I'm gonna need to turn this on. My screen should flash back really quick. There you go. All right, it's turned on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the recording, but you have your little icon up here. And when you start recording with it, that will give you a green circle so you know you're recording. So shadow manual and then shadow recording. Shadow recording is a really, really cool idea and concept. Basically, see, typically when it comes to recording software, you know, you press start recording and now you're recording. You know, it's pretty simple. You start recording until you click stop record. But with shadow, what you could do with this is say you are not recording and you were playing your game, and something really cool happens, but you're not recording. So, oops, you missed out, no one's ever gonna see it, right? Well, actually wrong. You can select shadow recording for this, and something really cool happened, you hold down Alt and press F10, and it will automatically save the last 20 minutes of the game that you were playing, even though you weren't recording. So that's a really, really cool concept. And you can have both manual and shadow uh, selected. The rest of this is all really simple stuff. You know, change your resolution, change the quality, change the frame rate between 30 or 60. 
and then audio is just in-game and in-game and microphone. So you don't have many options with shadow play, um, and it's not fantastic. Like I said, I have a lot of problems with it, and it's still in beta. The one I would... I'm going to turn this off. There we go. Again, what I would recommend is using is DX Story. This works the best for me. Now for editing. Uh, people seem to get the most tripped up when it comes to editing. I just recommend using Sony Vegas. It is the... It is not as complicated as it looks. A lot of people will get overloaded the moment they look at it because there's so many windows and different options, but it's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and open up Sony Vegas. It automatically opened up my last project I was working on. Uh, if you guys are curious how much work it makes, it takes to make one of the gun showcases. This is this is all the stuff you got to do. Um, but you shouldn't have to do this much editing if you're just doing straight up gameplay. So let's start a new one, and let's just go ahead and open a file that I recorded with DX Story a few minutes earlier. Killing four. Alright, so the first thing you do when you open up a file with Killing Floor, click on this, Project Video Properties. Go to View Transform and turn this off. Whoa, so much better. I don't know why Sony Vegas has this open by default, but never have that turned on. Another thing you want to turn off is right click on the video timeline down here, go to Properties, click Disable resample. Smart resample will be turned on by default, but click disable resample and click OK. What this does is it prevents ghosting. What ghosting is, is it kind of has, say, something moved, say you moved your hand across the screen. There will be black outlines of your hand behind your hand, and this will make things a lot clearer. So you don't want ghosting in your video, just turn it off. It's annoying that it's turned on by default. Alright, so as I was saying with the audio timeline, this is something that's really, really cool. Uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at this. What you're seeing here, right here, what I just turned down and turned back up, this is my microphone. This timeline here that I'm now turning down and back up is the video game sound. So with all the other video recording software, everything would be in one timeline. My microphone would be thrown in with the video game sound. So if I wanted to go through later and say, oh, my microphone's too loud, let me just turn that down. There we go, now it matches up with the video game. I can't do that anymore with the other ones because it would all be the same and you'd have to mess with the in-game audio way too much. Something else I found rather interesting, this happens with very select games. Killing 4 is one of those games. As you notice, it's really, really dark. Uh, let me go ahead and open up another bit of recording I got with when I was recording the gun showcase. Now as you see here, this isn't so dark, this looks fine. But when it comes to this, this is really, really dark. Killing 4 does this for some reason. The way you fix this is you click on the video effects selection over here, click brightness and contrast, click brighter, and just drag that onto the top of this. Now it's really, really bright. This, this window will open, it opened on my second screen so you didn't see it. And just mess with the levels of this. I find that .006, just turning up that little amount, seems to be perfect. And as you can see, now you can see it fine. So I don't, I don't know why you have to do that with Killing Force specifically, it's the only game where I've had to do that. Uh, but do note, I know some people have had to do this for all of their games. You might have to do this, and if it's a little bit strange for you, just, just tweak with the number here until you find a one that looks normal. Just brightness, that's all you really need to change. Alright, so say you want to render this now, what do you do? How do you render it? How does this become a small file? Because keep in mind, when you record gameplay off your PC, it's raw files. So that file is going to be huge, and you need to render it afterward because you're not going to be able to upload a 50 gigabyte video to YouTube, you gotta render that down. Alright, so click on File, Render As, it'll take a moment for this to open. Scroll down to Sony AVC, 
And depending on whether you're rendering in 1080 or 720, uh, either select Internet 1920 by 1080 or Internet 1280 by 720. Now I have a 1080 video, so I'm going to click Internet 1920 by 1080. Click on Customize Template right below that, and this will pop up. First thing you want to do is change the frame rate. By default, it will have 30 frames per second selected. If you record it at 60, click on the arrow, go down to double NTSC, so 60 frames. And then go down here, the encode mode will be forcing CPU only for some odd reason. Click automatic instead. The rest can be left alone. Click on this audio tab. Change the bitrate to 320,000. And that's all you gotta do. The rest of it's fine, you click OK, you click on Browse, select where you want to save it, let's just say Test, Save, and then you click Render, and the... Uh, I'll start doing this real quick, it might make my computer go a lot slower. And as you can see, it's just gonna start rendering. Something to keep in mind, it will take a long time to render if you were rendering in 1080 by 60 frames. This video is 50 seconds long and you can see how slow it's taking. Granted, I am recording with OBS, so I might be a little bit slower than usual. Let's go ahead and cancel this. If you are rendering at 720, 30 frames, the video should take about the same length to render as the video itself. So if it's a 10 minute video, it'll take 10 minutes to render. 60 frames doubles that time. With 1080, if you're rendering at 60, at 30 frames, it seems to take just barely, maybe about twice as long as the video. So a 10 minute video might take 20 minutes, but if you put that to 60 frames, it'll take 40 minutes. And really this depends on your computer's hardware. I have a pretty good computer. I have a i7-3820, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, my GPU is 670OC edition, a little overclocked. So that's not a bad computer. And this will all depend on your hardware. So it might take longer, it might take shorter if you have a beast of a PC, but keep that in mind. And hey, that's all the information you need to know. To, to recap everything, Too Long Didn't Read version, DX Story, Sony Vegas Pro, along with the Legorith lossless codec this is really what I recommend. But I felt like giving you guys some other options to test around yourself if, say, DX Story didn't work correctly for you, for example. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, uh, I've been needing to remake this for a long time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.